MTD flight 875 complete. Now we are in front of the famous Space Center, Houston. Official visitor center of NASA Johnson Space Center, Houston. Opens daily at 9 a.m. This is Naveen. Welcome back to another new episode of Tintin Travel. We are actually going to Houston. On the way, we thought of just visiting Galveston. And this was not a planned visit. We are saving all the attractions for our next trip. And the amusement park and the roller coaster. Yeah. From Galveston, we are heading to Houston, the Bucks House. From here it is 40 minutes, just 35 miles. We reached in front of the Bucks House. We reached Deepak's house around 3.40. Deepak and Sanju prepared a fantastic dinner for us. Even kids enjoyed the evening. We all had a wonderful time, even though it was a short time here. Next day morning, we visited the Space Center, Houston. We are reaching Space Center, Houston. This will open at 9 o'clock. Time is just 8.30. Welcome to Space Center, Houston. Hmm. See that? Parking, electric vehicle charging, everything left, right? Time ticket entry, right? Mm. You can go and park nearby. More like back to school. <laughs> Now we are in front of the famous Space Center Houston. Official visitor center of NASA Johnson Space Center Houston. Opens daily at 9 a.m. This will open daily at 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Space Center, Houston. Thank you. Thank you. You need help playing your We game. entered the Space Center. First, we got the map. So, in this map, they have clearly mentioned the exhibits and the places of attraction. Okay? I know where to go first. Rocks from space. Oh. Basically, an asteroid. Asteroid? Me, me, do you right? No. Yes, you have no. Show you that. So, I think some person. Are you feeling like. 
use it to align target camera with docking point. Use left joystick to control the shuttle. Apollo pressure suit. Now we got the boarding pass for four time two. Okay. It will start now. It's a 16 minutes. Oh, oh man! We need to line up here. Uh, not surprising. Start at nine o'clock. We need to line up the queue. This is the most recommended tour available here. Okay. Very limited tickets available. Uh -huh. So first we need to get the the pass. We can pick something from here. They call it as food lab. Food lab. Soft toys, all customized for his space center. Yeah. The tram, the tram tour will start at 9:20 today. We are waiting here. This is the most recommended tour. Very limited tickets available. So recommend to get the ticket once you enter the space center. We booked the slot for 9 o'clock. So exactly 9 o'clock we came in. There are so many exhibits to see here. This is the space model. They are landing there, right? This is Mars, right? You are in Mars now. <laughs> see here, you can see the gravity differences. Just lift this. Yeah. No gravity, right? It's not coming down, right? Lift. This one. Walk on Mars. Group one. So categorizing the group. Oh, it's outside. Astronaut training facility. Okay. I think 45 or 60 minutes. It has written 60 minutes. That is the tram. Oh. Will be going in that tram. No AC. No AC. It's an open vehicle. Now we boarded the tram, it will start now. Hello everybody and welcome to the NASA Tram Tour. My name is Jonah and our driver is Vic. Can everybody hear me? Please put your hands in the air if you can hear me. Awesome, great. So I'm about to read out some pretty important safety information, so I would appreciate your attention. You are all clear. The land of the JNC Six Hall was previously owned by Rice University, who sold the land to NASA in 1962. Oh. I it. I it. I to officially welcome you to the Johnson Space Center. To your left, you will see the world famous Longhorn cattle. These magnificent animals are native to Texas, and they are part of the Longhorn Project, a nonprofit organization operating on land leased by JSC. This building and the surrounding area pick up the George W.S. Abbey Rocket This area was dedicated to George Abbey in 2021. George Abbey was a former safety director at JSC and worked as the Apollo spacecraft assistant man rocket used during the Apollo program to bring our astronauts to the moon. It is one of the world's tallest, heaviest, and most powerful rockets in existence. The rocket inside of this building is the only flight certified Saturn V left in the entire world. Next to the Saturn V, you can see two buck-up rockets on display. The shorter rocket with the red top is a model of a Mercury vessel that was, a repur was repurposed by NASA to carry their crew and Mercury capsule into space. A capsule like this, the Phase 7, can be seen in Starship Gallery back at Space Center Houston, a rocket used during the Apollo program. 
The capsule at the top of the rocket is a real test capsule. The launch escape system, tower-like structure on top of the rocket, is used during an emergency in the first few minutes of flight. This technology is still being used today with modern rocket designs. Rockets like these were influential in the development and support of the earliest moon missions. Hi to our friends at a rocket park. I got the wildlife on campus. That is because JSC is also a wildlife preserve with more than 250 deer living here, as well as other animals like rabbits, turtles, and even an alligator named Deacon. This building has several jobs, one of which is housing the Orion Project office. This facility is responsible for the development of the Orion Multi-Purpose Crew Vehicle. Orion is the capsule NASA is using as part of the Artemis program. This structure is designed to have reduced environmental making it JSC's newest leadership and energy and environmental design certified building. Space Environment Simulation Laboratory, which is used to test the tolerance of spacecraft and equipment in the harsh conditions, used to reduce the temperature to negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. This facility also uses heat lamps to mimic the hottest environments a spacecraft may encounter, up to 302 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1985, these test chambers were designated National Historic Landmarks. You will see Building 37, Lunar Receiving Laboratory. Back during the Apollo program, this building was constructed to quarantine astronauts and samples brought back from the moon. Because the building has not been used in some time, and the problems inside the lab were deemed to be unfixable, it was decided that the laboratory will need to be demolished. Featuring full-size models of spacecraft, inside, you will learn how astronauts' extensive training helps prepare them for their jobs in space. Before we reach the building, here are a few very important pieces of information. We will be climbing up a set of 26 steps. Please continue moving down the hallway until you reach the first stop. This will allow room for the rest of your tour. So we call it the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility, or just Astronaut Training Facility for short. This is the building where models and mock-ups of all kinds of spacecraft, robots, and space stations are created for testing and training purposes. Since 1980, every NASA astronaut has walked the floors of this building in preparation for their next mission, currently for our current space station missions, as well as preparing for the next generation of spaceflight, the Artemis program. The large white and gray cylinders you see here are a full-scale mock-up of the International Space Station. These are what we call low-fidelity mock-ups, which means NASA uses these to train astronauts of basic safety or storage procedures on the ISS. Astronauts began launching from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida using a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Instead of relying on the Russian Suyas for transportation to and from the ISS, SpaceX is one of the companies participating in NASA's commercial... Alrighty folks, if you look towards the back, you'll see a silver capsule marked with the Orion logo. This is the Orion Command Module. Engineers and astronauts have been doing extensive research and training to prepare a capsule like this for crewed Artemis missions around the moon. Artemis 1 launched on November 6th. So how is it? It's done here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to drop us in the space center. Mm -hmm. From there, we can try the rocket tour. Yeah, so yeah this is done. So, yeah, we'll be back right in 20 minutes. Park, everybody wave. Hi. <laughs> The first stage of Falcon 9 is entirely reusable. Now, if you look over towards the Defendant's Plaza, you'll notice a Vulcan 747 and on top of it, a mock-up shuttle known as the Defendant's. 
All the independence is a font. The vote is 747. This is the real deal. You're okay, Park? Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks. So we're going for Rocket Park Tour. We are also included in the general admission. We raised the rocket park. Yeah, a two engine, versatile sidekick. Okay, come. How big it is? Saturn V would lift the equivalent of about 10 school buses into Earth orbit. The Saturn V launched manned Apollo program missions from 1968 through 1972. It was also used in 1973 to launch Skylab, the first American space station. SLS, most powerful new rocket. Hmm, come. Space launch system, that is SLS. Are the cues inside? Yeah. yeah. 1970, with Mission Commander Jim Lovell, Command Module Pilot Jack Swaggart, and Lunar Module Pilot Fred Hayes. Two days into a three-day journey to the lunar surface, disaster struck. Okay, yeah, we've had a problem here. All right, here's the way we're going. A malfunction in an oxygen tank caused the service module to rupture, losing two of the three fuel cells and venting oxygen into space. Without electricity, the astronauts were cold and quickly running out of water and breathable air. The work of countless individuals in mission control. Yes. Seven forty-seven. Well, the spatial independence is a mock-up. The Boeing 747 is the real deal. Going to California, New Mexico to launches in Florida. One more second as we get the gate open. So this is Independence Plaza. See, we can go on top of this and see, right? Hmm? Now we are going to shuttle flight deck. Yes. Independence Plus House.
MTD flight 875 complete. When John Command landing and we banged up the wing. By refining the models and test after test, John Kiker and his team finally achieved success. So we talked to our aerodynamics people and asked them what we should do. That's Mars. That's Mars. That's Mars. No stars in the lunar sky. This is moon, right? Yeah. This is lunar rover. Astronauts drew lunar rovers on the moon during the last three Apollo missions. Apollo 15, Apollo 16, and Apollo 17. Okay? Come. This is Apollo 17 command module. See? Apollo 17 command module. See inside? What is this? Omega Moon Watch. Footprint. This is the watch, right? Simulator rights. Now we came here for our lunch. This is Himalayan Taj, Indian and Nepali restaurant, just near to Space Center, Houston. We are about to reach Bucky's. Bucky's! 
the largest gas station in Texas. We are in I-45 to K deviation through exit 142. Oh yeah, baby. We reach Bucky's biggest gas station in Texas on the way back to Dallas from Houston. This is the biggest uh, gas station in Texas. Show me that. Okay. So we had a stop here. Now we are heading to Dallas, 163 miles from here. It will take two and a half hours, 163 miles back to our home. With this, we are ending this episode here. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.